Hello everyone, we are team 592416 and our topic is online payment fraud detection. The team members are Aryan Sharma, Pranav Singh Mahara, Arjun Madhotra, Kanisha Khanna. So the increasing use of online credit debit card transaction due to the growth in internet and e-commerce has led to a rise in fraud cases. Detecting these frauds is crucial but can be challenging due to various limitations in accuracy drawbacks of existing approaches. To address this issue, a proposed method utilizes classification algorithms such as Decision Tree, Random Forest, SVM, and XGBoost classifier to train and test the data for fraud detection. The best performing model is selected and saved in a PKL format, and the project involves integrating it with a flask. So, uh, if we talk about the first cell, we use the Kaggle API to seamlessly download a key data set for fraud detection. Unzipping the data set provides us with necessary data for training and testing our fraud detection model. In the next cell, we are talking about importing the libraries. Essential libraries like NumPy, Panda, SciSet Learn are imported for data handling and model creation. Category data is encoded using label encoding. There are other libraries as well, such as NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. And for model building, we have label encoder, random forest classifier, and decision tree, SVC, and XGB. If we talk about the next cell, it is we are using pd.read underscore CSV, which is a pandas library to read the CSV file. Next, we are basically dropping the is flagged fraud and access equal to one, that is, uh, we are removing the column. It is because it is a useless column. Then we are basically using df.shape, which are basically rows and column. Next is uh, df.describe. We are basically using df.describe uh, because it is a uh, five point summary in statistics. So we get a better clear view of our data. Next is df.info. So we get information about data types, non-null counts, memory usage summary. Next we, next cell is uh, df.isnull.sum. So with this step, we get a clear idea that we have no null values in our data set. Next is uh, df.corr, which is a correlation thing. And uh, correlation matrix generated using df.core revealing relationship between variables valuable for understanding dependencies and potential multicollinearity. Next is uh, data visualization. So we have univariate analysis. Univariate analysis looks at one thing at a time, helping us understand and find patterns in just one variable of our data. So we have a bar graph, which is generated using matplotlib to showcase the distribution of transaction types. The type column is analyzed to understand the proportion of each transaction type and data set. Next is box plot. Uh, we employ a box plot to gain insights into a distribution and potential outliers within our data set. Next is count plot. Seaborn's SNS.countplot is employed to visualize the count of each transaction type. This provides a clear picture of frequency of different transaction types. Thank you. Hello, I'm Pranav and I will be continuing from this plot. So in the following cell, we are using Seaborn's SNS.displot to uh, create a histogram that illustrates the distribution of transaction amounts in our given data set. Next, we also use the count plot uh, from Seaborn uh, to get a good idea of the counts of is fraud in our given data set. Uh, after this, we followed it up by using uh, value counts to provide a count of the fraudulent and non-fraudulent transactions in our data set, which is given by one for fraudulent and zero for non-fraudulent. And after that, we also followed it up with uh, using df.log to update the is fraud column. And in this, we replace the zeros with is fraud and one with is not, sorry, zeros with is not fraud and one with is fraud. By labeling the transaction, it simplifies the interpret interpretation, aiding in subsequent analysis and model training for our fraud detection. Next, we will be going into bivariate analysis. And basically, bivariate analysis involves examination of different uh, variables, more than one variable in number. It aims to understand how one variable changes in regard to another. So we will be doing this through joint plot over here. As you can see, we have used old balance origin and a new balance origin to get a joint plot. This helps us understand how changes are 
happen uh, between these two variables. Uh, we have also used a scatter plot, as you can see, uh, between the is fraud column and the new balance origin column. As you can see over here, the scatter plot has no correlation at all. We also formed another scatter plot between two correlated uh, columns, which are amount and old balance origin. This is shown in the graph on the screen. Next, we'll be moving on to multivariate analysis. So multivariate analysis is a very essential part of uh, our visual anal analysis. And in this, we use uh, the exploration of two or more variables, actually more than two variables, to examine relationships between our data set. The goal is to uncover patterns and dependencies and interactions among these variables. So over here, we have used a heat map. Heat map is one of the most essential things uh, in the multivariate analysis. It is a visual representation of the correlation matrix of our data set. And, uh, Annotations provide numerical insights into the feature correlations, and it is a better way for checking of multicollinearity in our data set. Next, we'll be moving on to the data pre-processing. As you all know, data pre-processing is a vital part for uh, our AI project here. It is used for cleaning, transforming, and optimizing our data set. So we do this to ensure accurate model training and so that our fraud detection issues like missing values and outliers and imbalance are treated. So firstly, what we did was we found out the shape of our data set. This is just a general uh, thing that we do to get a better idea of our data set. Then we moved on by dropping the two columns which were unnecessary for our analysis. We dropped the name origin column and the destination name column. And then we used df.head to find out if the columns have been dropped and our data set has been updated or not. Uh, we move on to a very essential part of data pre-processing, which is the removal of outliers. Uh, because our data set is so massive, as just shown above in the df.shape, we have over 63 lakh observations. So instead of the replacement process, we went for removal instead, as this would give us a better accuracy and more accurate results. We could have used any of three uh, uh, removal uh, methods. We could have used IQR, which is interquartile range. We could have used transformation method, which is z-score, or percentile method. We went for transformation method because this gave us the best outcome. So this is a visualization uh, of the outliers which exist in our data set. This is through box plot, which we have already discussed above. Now we'll come into how we used uh, transformation method to really remove outliers. Firstly, we created uh, a list called NUM num, and we in this list we have the names of all the columns in our data set. Nextly, we imported stats from SciPy, and we used this for uh, the Z-score value. And uh, using the Z-score from SciPy, a loop iterates through the numerical features, and the outliers are identified and removed by retaining only those with a standard three deviation from the mean. This process ensures that the data set is refined and minimizes the impacts of outliers. As you can see in the SNS dot box plot of the data frame over here, the uh, outliers have been reduced drastically. Uh, to be precise, it has been reduced by a measure of one magnitude. Next, we will come to another essential part, which is label encoding. And this would be our last step of data pre-processing. So we use this to we use label encoding over one hot encoding because uh, it is one hot encoding is usually used in special cases, and it is only used. It's not used here because uh, it increases the dimension of the data set and hence reduces accuracy. So we preferred the standard method of label encoding. In label encoding, uh, machine learning model training is done by converting categorical data into a, a form of data which can be comprehended by the system, which is numerical data. So as you can see, first we initialize label encoding as LE, and then the only uh, categorical column that we had remaining was type, and then we used uh, label encoding to transform it into numerical data. As we can see over here, that uh, the data set is then divided into independent and dependent. The X is the independent part, which is the whole of the data set without the is fraud column, and the Y is the dependent part, which is the is fraud column by itself. Using X dot head and Y dot head, we get a view of the columns. Arjun will continue from here. Hello, my name is Arjun Sharma. After label encoding, now we come to the train test split part. So train test split is used to assess a machine learning model's performance by dividing the data set into training and testing sets. 
it helps evaluate how well the model generalizes to unseen data and prevents overfitting. As we can see, here we have split the data in the 8 to 8 to 20 ratio, where 20% of the data is split for testing, while the remaining 80% is used for training the data for our model. Uh, as we can see here, we have used a random state uh, variable, which is used to shuffle our data. This is done to avoid our bias. Next up is the model building part. And here are the few models that we have used. First is random forest classifier. We have used random forest classifier as it is an ensemble machine learning model that builds multiple decision trees during training and outputs the mode of the classes for uh, classification tasks. It improves accuracy and generalization by combining the predictions of individual trees. As we can see, here we have initialized the random forest classifier with a variable RFC uh, equals to random forest classifier function and train it using the training uh, data with the variable RFC.fit on X train and Y train. Uh, after doing this, we get a test accuracy of 99.97% and a train accuracy of 1. We have also used uh, a function called crosstab, which generates a confusion matrix, offering a detailed view of true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative values. And next up is the classification report, uh, which is you, uh, with which we can uh, see two things. First is the recall value and the accuracy. Uh, recall value is used to see uh, whether model is good or not. And as we can see, the accuracy for uh, the random first classifier is 99% here. Next up uh, is the decision tree classifier. We have used decision tree classifier because it, it is a tree shape model that recursively splits data based on the most significant attribute, creating a flowchart like structure to make decisions or predictions in a step by step manner. It is widely used in classification and regression tasks in machine learning. Uh, as we can see here, we initiate the decision tree classifier uh, function with uh, the variable DTC. And uh, we use it to train the training data with the function DTC.fit on X train and Y train. Predictions are made on the test set and accuracy is evaluated with the accuracy score of 99.96% for test accuracy. And the train accuracy is one. Next up is the support vector machine classifier, also known as SVM. So a SVM is a supervised machine learning algorithm that classifies data by finding the hyperplane that best separates different classes aiming to maximize the margin between them. It is effective both for classification and regression tasks. Here also we obtained an accuracy of 80%. Next up is our best model, uh, the XGBoost classifier. So we have used XGBoost uh, as it is an optimized gradient boosting algorithm that enhances decision tree models by using a combination of boosting and regularization techniques, achieving high performance and efficiency in supervised learning tasks. It is widely used for classification and regression problem in machine learning. Uh, similar to the above three models, here also we create a XGBoost classifier uh, uh, function and we uh, initialize it with the xgv1 variable and we use it to train with the training data using the function xgv1.fit on x train and y train predictions are then made on the test set and accuracy is assessed with the accuracy score of 99.97% for the test accuracy and the train accuracy being 99.98% which is the best of the above four models uh, at last we have decided our best model and it's just time to save the model so using pickle we use uh, we save our XGBoost model uh, using the function uh, pickle dot dumb uh, and uh, as we can see we uh, mention the variables XGV one and open model dot uh, and wb model dot is a file this allows us to reload and utilize the train model for future and fraud detection tasks we do this because uh, the even though the accuracies of XGB and uh, random forest is similar. And there is considerable difference in the recall values. And hence, we took the model which gives lesser, lesser errors and better recall, which is XGB here. So this is for the model building and selection part of, of the project now. We move on to the flask and front-end part next. Hi, everyone. My name is Kanish, and I'll be guiding you through the flask deployment process. So here, this is the main.css file, which is the main CSS of the entire web page. And this is the template folder, which contains three HTML files, home.html, product.html, result.html. 
the home.html is the landing page of the website and which will navigate us to the prediction page which contains a form that takes relevant entries and on and the relevant entries will be fed into the model and the prediction will be displayed on the result.html page so this is the result.html page and now we have the app.py file which is the flask file and here i have read the model and on navigating to the home the home.html page will be rendered and on navigating to the predict the predict.html page will be rendered so now in the predict.html page we have a form which contains an action dot uh, slash bread and this this will take the post request and the entries given to the form will be given to the model and which will predict the output and the output will be displayed in the result.html page so now let us uh, start the model So yeah, this is the link for the website and this is the homepage of the website and this is the button which will navigate us to the prediction page. Now we have a form and here we will uh, enter the entries. So 90, 1, 144. So as we can see, this payment is fraud. Let us predict for another one. So now we can see that this payment is not wrong. So that is how the web page is designed and the model is integrated with Flask and the data is sent to the model. And then the prediction is shown on the result.html page. Thank you.